I think that it's we're going to have to talk about systems. In the same way the squad came through to change to change Congress, we need lots more versions of that, of more people running for office who are representing different groups of people than just the interests of white folks in America. Silly me. Here, I thought that we were all in this together and policy should help to make life better for everybody, not just select racial groups, and definitely not policies specifically intended to do harm to people based on their skin color. God, I am so tired of talking about race, but this is our life now every single day. Welcome back, everyone. It seems that with every passing day, this country becomes more and more tolerant of racism and hatred against white people. Really strange seeing as how 70% of this country is white. Apparently, we've been so heavily indoctrinated to hate ourselves that we think allowing unchecked racism against whites is some sort of self-flagellating penance for the mistreatment of minorities in the past. It's not. The problem, of course, is that you can't fix racism with more racism. You just get an endless cycle of resentment and payback, which, come to think of it, may be exactly what they want. And speaking of never-ending cycles, give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer that'll help you stave off the negative effects aging has on our bodies. Collagen makes your skin healthy and gives you a youthful look. It strengthens nails, hair, teeth, and gut health maintains muscle, improves joints, and so much more. Ageless Multi-Collagen also has a no-junk policy, so no artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, or sweeteners. If you order today, you can save up to 51% off Ageless Multi-Collagen. And rest assured knowing this company offers a 60-day money-back guarantee, even on empty bags. Go to www.healthwithdronetech.com and order today or click the link in the description or pinned comment. Today we're talking about CNN darling Kamau Bell, an extremist racial conspiracy theorist who is given this platform to spout his claims, but without even being scrutinized or fact-checked. Seriously, nobody in the fake news media ever questions or scrutinizes anything this guy says, which has become the norm in far-left politics. Anyone who does ask questions gets summarily axed from their jobs and society. We're being trained. You might remember Kamau Bell from when he was heavily promoting Antifa and encouraging violence. He actually did a puff piece on the guy who ended up being killed in a terrorist attack on an ICE facility. These white people are the redneck revolt. Now they aren't a bunch of rednecks revolting against equality like I first thought. They're actually rednecks revolting against the rednecks who are revolting against equality. I'll explain. Yeah, they're actually communists, and they went on to attack an ICE facility. Of course, that was never newsworthy or proof that the DNC media is in fact inciting violence. Anyone else would have lost their jobs, but anything goes on the left. The only standard that they have are double standards. White supremacy is just when a white person doesn't like a black person, but that's just prejudice. In America, white supremacy is a system that promotes whiteness and white maleness specifically, and white Christian maleness specifically, over everyone else. Golly gee, Mr. Racist Hate Monger. Maybe that's not intentional and a result of this country being a majority white. If you go to Japan, you're likely gonna find that they champion Japanese culture above all others. I guess that's just white supremacy. Perhaps people just emulate what you call whiteness because of the success it brings people. I wouldn't even call it whiteness, just making good choices. Thanks to the Smithsonian and the National Museum of Black History and Culture, we know guys like Bell think things like, like individualism, independence, delayed gratification, family structure, a good work ethic, rational thinking, and setting goals are all hallmarks of white supremacy. If all of that is whiteness, what's wrong with promoting it? Frankly, I think the idea of promoting these traits as connected to a skin color to be incredibly racist and self-defeating. I mean, it's the very definition of racism to ascribe traits and abilities based on skin color. As if there aren't cultures all over this planet that value those traits. So if this is in fact whiteness, then I see nothing wrong with promoting it. Even so, I don't see anybody really promoting whiteness. What does that even mean? We don't know because he isn't asked to explain it. Think about it. If they started asking probing questions of these broad baseless claims, the answers they get may not be very palatable to most Americans. So best just keep it as vague and general as possible. As far as what's being promoted in the mainstream, what I see constantly being promoted is how evil and horrible white people are and how amazing and stunning everyone else is. Like there's 
There's no end brownness or end blackness courses at universities across this country. It's all end whiteness. Just look at TV commercials for another example. White men are always portrayed as bumbling idiots while black and brown people look on in stunned amazement. So with our Ally Cashback credit card, you get rewarded for buying stuff. Like what? Like a second bee helmet with protective netting. Or like a balm, you know? Perhaps Bell is just really jealous of white people and that paranoia leads him to fear us. That's precisely the problem here is that all of these claims are very subjective and nebulous. Likely the reason that CNN and other networks don't press him and others like him on these claims is because they know the slightest bit of digging will debunk all of this nonsense. They can't have that. There's an election coming up. But it's also just people who feel like they have no responsibility for racism in this country because they never personally owned slaves. No, I don't have any personal responsibility for racism because I'm an individual and we don't collectively guilt or punish people based on their skin color in this country. Unless, of course, you're a white person, apparently. Perhaps these people need to open a book and read up on the violent and bloody history of collective punishment and guilt. She, she had never heard of the, of the problem with the idea of collective group-based guilt the one of the one of the processes by which the marxist doctrine was transformed into the murderous outcomes in the soviet union was to play collective guilt games the soviets killed all their um productive farmers in the late 1920s so they threw them all on trains shipped them up to siberia killed them all collectivized the farms and in the 1930s six million ukrainians starved to death so this idea of collective guilt and then the fact that someone could come right out and, you know, question me on my white privilege, if, if that isn't racism, I, I've never encountered racism in my life. Does Kamau Bell have some sort of personal responsibility for the disproportionate amount of violent crime and murder committed by black men? Of course not. That would be completely insane. Kamau Bell, the individual, can't be blamed for what other people are doing just because he shares their skin color. This should worry every American. The idea that we would hold people responsible for something they had nothing to do with based on their skin color is disturbing. But there it is, right there on a national news network. As you look at this, I wonder, Kamau, in your conversations, but also in watching the news, when you see public attitudes towards racism change and a greater uh, public recognition, right? Vast majorities of Americans see it now. Black Lives Matter, which, which for, for some time was a fringe uh, motto, if you want to call it, of a movement now now has a majority of Americans who, who believe there is something there. First of all, this guy isn't having any conversation. He's making a bunch of wild claims with no evidence and not being challenged on any of it. He's being promoted and allowed to spew his propaganda without even a hint of scrutiny. No doubt anybody that even attempted to have a conversation would be immediately shut down as a racist and white supremacist simply for disagreeing. And no, BLM nor the Black Panthers are mainstream organizations. The fact is, most Americans agree that Black Lives Matter. We never oppose that or disagreed with it. It's incredibly insulting to think that Americans need to be lectured about this by a group of far left extremists, especially when the biggest threat to black Americans is other black people. And it's not even close. What we need is systemic and structural change. So I think that it's, we have to talk about systems in the same way the squad came through to change, to change Congress. We need lots more versions of that, of more people running for office who are representing different groups of people than just the interests of white folks in America. <laughs> and there it is. We need more people like the squad because this is all really about destroying the country and replacing it with a Marxist vision that openly hates and discriminates against white Americans. And just like I started this video, I end it baffled by my misguided belief that we were all in this together. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can support our sponsors, or you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.